Good morning. Good morning. I'm already preaching. Man, if we've never met before, my name is Matthew. I'm honored to be one of the pastors here at Venture Church, and I'm happy that those that couldn't make it have the ability to tune in through online. Thank you to our amazing production team. Can we give it up for our production team who does such a great job? And our worship team who led us so boldly. Come on. As a pastor, you start talking about ministry. And our fit team, and our VKIS team, and our venture students team, and our cleaning team. I've got to talk about everybody because someone's going to get hurt. That's a word right there in itself. Maybe I'll preach about that, becoming someone that's not offended all the time. One thing we want to tell you right off the bat is that you do not have to believe to belong here at Venture Church. But you better believe as a team we're praying and we're hopeful that when you hear the message, it will change your life. Amen. That there will be salvation to come to those that don't know Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. So how we doing, fam? How we doing? Last week, if you were here, you started off the year great coming to church. And you heard the word over the house, and we had a strong start, didn't we, church? We had a strong start last week. If you missed the message, you better go back and watch it. It's on YouTube. It is worth the listen. And we started a brand new series titled Becoming, and this is the blurb that we created for this series that says, in order to become, in order to become, there has to be a starting point. God has given us his word. And it's not just for information, but it's for what? Transformation. The evidence is in the progress. We are set apart, chosen, and appointed. In private and in public, we are becoming. And a huge part of becoming is growing Right, Growing in Christ and maturing in Christ to be more like him. And as your pastors and our teachers here at Venture Church, we have a responsibility to lead you in your growth, to lead you in your spiritual transformation. Amen? Now, the spirit of the living God does it, but we have the mandate to lead you through scripture and lead you through God's word and to teach you and equip you, amen? Ephesians 4, 11 through 14 tells us this. It says, he is the one who gave these gifts to the church, the apostle, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, We are his people. Come on. We are his church. Man, sign me up, somebody. I'm ready to just release the album today. We are the body of Christ until we come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will be mature. Someone say mature. And full grown in the Lord. Measuring up to the full stature of God. Christ. Amen? Amen. Not your CEO, not your neighbor, not the guy at school that you want to look like, talk like, sound like, dress like, but who? Christ. Then we will no longer be like children, forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or because someone has cleverly lied to us and made the lie sound like truth. When we are born into this life, we are babies. So what do we get to have to nourish on as babies? Milk. And then as you get a little bit older... We get introduced to baby food and softer food. And then as you get a little bit older, then you start eating (laughs) Chick-fil-A. There are stages to this. And the hope is on this spiritual journey that you will not be on the bottle your whole entire life. Amen? but that you will grow in phases from milk to baby food to softer food 
and then to Chick-fil-A. What is that? What, what, what are we talking about here? We're talking about your knowledge and understanding of God's word. This doctrine that we, we read in God's word, this truth. Amen? And when you understand it and you know it, then those people that are up on a stage and they're talking about things that you won't even find in a Bible. They're called false teachers or people that have opinions over your life because you have to watch who you give your ear to because their opinions are not greater than God's word, amen? You will be able to pick up on that when you have whole food, amen? When you are understanding God's word, it will not be greater than false teachers or people's opinions over your life. In order for us to do this, we must grow in our faith. So what are the things that you want to become this year? I'm going to tell you this. I want to be more like Christ and less like myself. And that's not just a 2023 thing. That's an everyday thing. And then God gave me a word for 23 in my life. It's finish. To start what you finish, son. And so I'm going to finish well. Not just in 2023, but when God calls this race done in my life, I want to finish my race well. And then in the areas in my life that maybe I'm not as consistent in, like reading and developing and being disciplined in some areas of my life, like in how I eat and what I spend my time with and how I prioritize my family. These things are so important to me. This year is going to be like no other year in my life, and you better believe I am becoming and I pray that you have that same confidence as you walk into this year, knowing the strength that you have within you. Amen. So that's my year. What about yours? Have you even thought about it? Some people went into 2023 without any goals. Some people went into 2023 with all the goals. What are you becoming this year? Matter of fact, I want to take 60 seconds. Okay. And we are a note-taking church. So if you have your notes, which I hope you do, and even if you don't have your notes, open up your notes on your phone and write down 60 seconds. Are you ready? What are you becoming this year? Ready? One, two, three. 60 seconds. <laughs> Ding, 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 school's in session. Are you ready? There's homework today. Some say, oh, no. Oh, no, I don't want homework. Now, there's homework. Look at your neighbor and say, there's homework. Step two, I want you to go home today. And when there's downtime, someone say downtime. I want you to get into your prayer closet. I want you to get into a space where it's quiet and I want you to write down and really think about some action steps that you can put forward in order for you to become this year. Amen? I hope the number one thing that you want to become is more like Christ. Come on, somebody. If he's not first, I'm telling you right now, he's ought to be first in our life. He's got to be first in my life. He demands first place in our life. Amen? So the goal should always be first, more like you, Christ, less like me. 
We need action steps. Amen? Someone say, I need action steps. A dream without a plan is just a wish. You must have action steps. If you aim at nothing, you're going to hit it every single time. For some of you, you've already broken your 2023 New Year's resolution. We're eight days into this bad boy. And it's like, I already gave up. I'm already done. You can catch me at Jack. Right? I'm already done. You know what? I, I started this devotional. Three days in, I'm already done. Developing, developing. Someone say, I want to develop this year. Someone needs this reminder right now. You cannot plant a seed, water it once, and expect a harvest. Did you hear that? You cannot do that. It takes time. It takes dedication. It takes discipline. It takes perseverance. There are going to be some days where you are going to have some ups, and there are going to be some days that you are going to have some downs. Now look at your neighbor and tell them, you need to write down some steps. We need to write down some action steps, amen? So that we have the best opportunity to become. And today I'm going to challenge your development. And I'm going to preach from this statement, which is the message title today. In order to become, becoming requires development. Becoming requires development. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful for every moment in our life, for the ups and the downs, for the top of the mountain moments and for the dark valleys. God, you remain the same. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And God, I know that you want us to develop. I know that you want us to grow in our faith. I know that you desire, you desire the best for your children. God, I pray right now for the person that is on the verge of giving up. I'm praying for the person right now who is struggling and they're becoming. I'm praying for the person right now in this service who doesn't even know you as Lord and Savior. God, we pray for truth and salvation to come down, open up our eyes, open up our ears, soften our hearts, and help us to see the things that we cannot see. In Jesus' name, all God's people said... Amen. God used some ordinary people to do some extraordinary things in the word. Would you agree with that? But in order for these people to become who God created them to be, it required development. The disciples themselves as young children would understand who God was. But when Jesus would call them into the ministry, it took over three years for them to develop and become the disciples that God God in the flesh, Jesus, was wanting them to become. It took over three years. Someone say three years. And even then, some of them didn't get it after three years. The Apostle Paul wrote over two-thirds of the New Testament. He was saved, right? He was converted. He was blinded on the road to Damascus. He had an encounter with God. And then three years, someone say three years, he went into caves to be developed and to become the person that God had called them to be. And then there was a man named Joseph. Someone say Joseph. Joseph had a dream from God. But he was not yet prepared for this dream. How many of y'all have had a dream before from God or a vision from God, but you knew you weren't quite ready for this dream to come to pass in your life? God gave my wife and I a vision in 2014 to start a church. But if we would have planted in 2014, we would have failed miserably. We were excited to start a church. We wanted to start right away. But we first had to go through some seasons in order for us to develop. From 2014 to 2018, we went through some challenging seasons to get to venture. One season was a good season. The other season was a very difficult season. And that in itself 
is kind of like what life is, right? It can be good at times and difficult in other times. There can be highs and there can be lows. And even when God said it was time in 2018, it didn't get even easier or any easier. It got even more challenging because we never stopped becoming and we never stopped developing. Amen? After planning a church, there were letdowns and miscarriages and a pandemic. And I believe Anna and I grew more in those five years than we ever had in the 15 years of ministry that we've been a part of. And we wouldn't change it for a thing. Because in order for us to get to the next season, we had to develop in the seasons that we were facing in that time. God gave Joseph a dream. But in order for this dream to develop, he had to go through hardships and trials. This is Joseph. By the way, uh, you can read his story, Genesis chapter 37 through 50. If you haven't read his story in its entirety, I recommend today take some time to do that as you are thinking about the steps that you're going to take to become. Amen? Joseph, are you guys with me this morning? Come on, so I came ready to preach. Y'all just came ready to sit, huh? And just, just give me, give me, give me, give me. Come on. I'm here and I'm fired up. I hope you can respond today. Joseph was human trafficked by his own brothers. He was betrayed and deserted by his own family. Think about it. They were going to murder him. Then they were going to leave him in a ditch to die. And then they sold him off and they put him in human trafficking. Think about that. He was exposed at a young age to sexual temptation, punished for doing the right thing, imprisoned for 14 years, and forgotten by those that he had helped. And this is what we read about him in Psalms, in Psalm 105, 17 through 19. Then he sent someone to Egypt ahead of them. Joseph, who was sold as a slave, There in prison, they bruised his feet with fetters and placed his neck in an iron collar until the time came to fulfill his word. The Lord tested Joseph's character. 14 years he was imprisoned for doing what is right, and he was treated with such harsh punishment. You better believe while Joseph was being tested, it was his training. It was his preparation. It was getting him ready for what was to come for his life, for what God had in store for him. Amen? Because there was no way at 17 he was ready to do what God had in store for his future. He was Second in charge at one point after all of this. At 17 years old, I don't think he had enough life experience in order to do that job well. I know of some 17-year-olds that are smart, right? They're sharp, but there's just not enough life experience for them to lead a nation. Amen? So we had to go through some things because in order to become, we must be developed. Three questions I want to ask you today. Number one, it's this. Do you see the need to develop? Number two, do you have a desire? Do you have a desire to develop? And number three, if you're taking notes, will you do what's necessary to develop? In order for us to develop, We need all three of these, amen? Not just one, right? Because it's not enough to just see a need. It's not enough to just desire to develop. Will you do what's necessary to develop? Y'all remember this bad boy back in the day? These were fun, weren't they? Right, we would wind these bad boys up. Remember this sound? That's nostalgic right there, isn't it? That's like that AOL. Like, remember that? And then you would wind this bad boy. I remember many times, right? Wind that bad boy up. And then you would say, 
Cheese. Someone say cheese. cheese. Man, y'all look beautiful today. Come on, somebody. How about this side over here? Someone say cheese. Wow, look at that. Amazing. Come on over here. Someone say cheese. This is the silent people over here. Someone say cheese. Wow, y'all look good today. Remember in the 80s and the 90s, you could wind these bad boys up, you can take the shot, and then you could go down to your local Rite Aid, right? Y'all remember that? And you go down and you get this bad boy developed. Or back in the day, you'd go to Thrifties. Remember Thrifties? Remember some of you that grew up here in Salinas on North Main? And while you were there to get it developed, you begged your mom and dad for that scoop of ice cream, that 99 It's like bigger than the one you can, like the whole tub at the grocery store. They just kept digging and digging and digging. And a double scoop was like right here, right? And it would take one hour. Someone say one hour. It would take one hour for that bad boy to get developed and you would have your pictures. How many of y'all understand that it's going to take more than one hour for our life to develop? Amen. It's going to take more than one hour for us to become the people that God has called us to be and created us to be. There are going to be seasons, highs and lows. But are you going to be willing to stand firm and stay put and to trust your God with all that faith as you are in your seasons of life, whether it's something that you are enjoying or something that you are not enjoying, right? You know what I'm talking about, church? See, before you can get put up on a wall to be admired, you have to be led into a dark room to be developed, amen? We want progress in our life, but we don't like the process. No, we hate to wait, Anybody love to wait? Man, I'm becoming someone that loves to wait. What a year of 2023, right? Some of us, we don't like to wait. We want things now, right now. But waiting is necessary for our lives. And when we wait, it often saves you from the headaches you have had. Amen? or will have if you do not wait and do what's necessary to be developed. Waiting is necessary, amen? Some of you didn't wait, and you wish you would have. In our human nature, patience is just not natural. It's not. Have you ever had somebody tell you before, thank you for your patience? Has anybody ever told you that? Thank you for your patience. Man, I want to tell them, you're assuming I am. Because there are moments where I am not patient. Right? See, there's a progress. There's a progress when you are developing your film. When the role that is in here goes into the dark room, it must be completely dark. I remember that because I was in high school, I was a condor. Yes, North Monterey County. There's actually a school in Castroville, you guys. High school. And I took photography. Anybody took photography in high school? Yeah. I think it's a little different now, probably digital. But we actually had the old school cameras. And maybe they still do it like this today, where you had a roll of film. And I remember when you would go into the developing room, you had to make sure that the door was shut behind you. Because if it was not, and any light from the outside got in, it would destroy your film. And when you went to try to develop the picture that you took, it would be blurry or it would not ever come out. Listen. You and I know some people who have stepped into something just a little too soon and it destroyed their life or it set them back. There was an opportunity. Somebody say opportunity. But not every opportunity is an opportunity that should be taken in that moment. There was still some development that needed to be had over some of these people's lives that you're thinking about today. But they didn't listen. 
They didn't seek wise counsel. And they didn't even ask God, God, is this your will for my life? They just pulled the trigger and they started going in the direction that they wanted to go in their own life. Sometimes we try to push into existence our will and God is screaming, son, daughter, no, you're not ready yet. You still have some developing to do. I promise you, I gave you that vision. I gave you that picture. But there are some things that still need to be done in your life. And even then, some people ignore it. And they do what they want to do anyways. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 tells us this. And I believe someone right now, listening online or sitting in these seats today, needs to hear this. Even if you've heard it before, you need to hear it again. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your past straight. Amen? Isn't that good? We live in a generation where people are exposed and underdeveloped. Let me say that again. We live in a generation where people are exposed and they are underdeveloped because everybody wants a platform. Everybody wants a platform, but they are not willing to do what it takes in order for you to respectfully get your platform or to do it in a God-honoring way. People want to cut corners in their life, and it shows. It shows. Think about Joseph's life for a second. I'm sure in those 14 years shackled up, he was thinking, God, do you still have this great calling over my life? Do you still want that dream to come to pass over me? And God never doubted Joseph. God knew that Joseph was going to go through the tests and that he was going to make it on the other side. He just needed Joseph to develop first. After their father, Jacob, he had died in Egypt, Joseph's brothers, remember the ones that sold him off? They came back and they asked for mercy and forgiveness. And this is... Joseph's inspiring response. Listen to this. It says, don't be afraid. He's talking to his brothers. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. To accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. What the enemy intended for evil, God intended for good. And there are some areas in your life that you have been bitter about, but I'm telling you right now, I pray that God gives you a different perspective because it will change the way that you filter your life. It will change the way you even think about God. It will change the direction of your life when you can say, the enemy meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And I'm believing that I am becoming and it takes some developing. And even if it's hard, I'm staying in the dark room until God, you call me out of this room and into the light. Amen. And that should be our perspective, church. When you read Genesis 37 through 50, which if you haven't, I hope you do. I hope you do. You will read Joseph's story that every time, someone say every time. Every time there was a setback, Joseph had a positive response allowing him to take a step forward in his life, not a step back. Joseph didn't spend much time asking why. His approach was, what shall I do now? And those who were watching his life every single time, whenever Joseph was moving, whenever Joseph was doing something, they knew that God was with him. While he was enduring these hardships, it had produced something different in Joseph, the ability to see God's greater hand. Even in this ugly scenario where his own siblings 
We're going to kill him. We're going to leave him to die. No, they sold him off. They sold him off. They were cowards. And even in that city, he had, the, the, he, Joseph could have been like, no, I, I, I'm, I'm drawing a line. I don't even, I, I want nothing to do with you. I forgive you. But he had a different perspective, right? Talk about a Jesus perspective. Right now in some of our lives, if somebody crosses you, immediately you want retaliation. Immediately. That's the first thing you run to. If that's you today, I hope on your notes you are writing, Lord, I want to become more like you and less like me when people cross me. I want to have your eyes. I want to have your heart. I want to have your mouthpiece. I want to have your response. Because there were some people who crossed Jesus. There were some people that didn't even say it, but thought it, and he knew it. And he loved them anyways. Are you following me, church? God had used these trials to make Joseph mature and complete. When processing film, there's a trick that they tell you to do. They tell you to agitate the film. Someone say, agitate the film. I don't know about you, but as God is developing me and continues to develop me, there are some situations that are just so agitating in my life. There are some moments, there are some tests, there are some things that God allows me to walk through because in order for me to become the man that he wants me to be, I must go through these trials in order to be developed, amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about from their own life? It's not desirable to be agitated. I don't look for it. I don't want it. But it happens. And yet James, the half-brother of Jesus, reminds us, and he was reminding a group of people that were being developed to not give up in their times of testing. He says this in James 1, 2 through 4. He says, consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces. Someone say produces. produces. The testing of your faith is going to produce something. And what it tells us it produces is perseverance. On this race that you are on, as you are becoming and developing, you are going to need some perseverance for the race. Amen? So as you are Walking and things are getting hard and the tests are coming. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that your testing of your faith produces perseverance. And then verse four, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Church, These trials aren't comfortable, but they are necessary. They're not convenient, but they are mandatory. And if you're taking notes, I want you to jot this down. You can have growth or you can have comfort, but you rarely grow while you're comfortable. You rarely grow while you are comfortable. I remember taking pictures with this bad boy in the early 2000s. Y'all remember the early 2000s? No? Okay. I remember trips with my cousin Scott to the lake, San Antonio Lake. I remember pitching a tent out there and looking at the stars at one in the morning. I remember going and wakeboarding and tubing and him and I just battling it out. Y'all ever do two boars on, behind a boat and the person that's left, you just better pray to God that you survive because my cousin and I, he would always beat me at everything, but there was this one time, someone say one time, man, I felt like David battling Goliath. And I remember these wakes and I remember just going at it with them and I I remember because I was shocked that he fell in the water. But his best friend, Robert, was, he was, 
driving the boat and he just started to do these 360s like no other before. And he was probably going like 40 knots. And I remember I couldn't hold on anymore and I skid almost all the way to the shore, y'all. And we would take pictures with, with these cameras. I remember Winter Ball. Y'all remember Winter Ball? Right? We would take pictures, right? I remember hanging out with my friends at the beach. We would take pictures, right? And then there would be times where we would buy these things, but then we would put them somewhere and we would forget about them. Have you ever found one of these? And you're like, oh my gosh, I remember that. It's never been developed. And then you went to develop and you're like, I remember why I didn't want to develop these. (laughs) Honey, they're horrible. I just threw them away. Don't worry. You don't want to see these. It's a high school me. But I remember, right? I'd put it on my desk. And then, and then I would just go on with life and I'd come back and years later, dang, I still haven't developed this bad boy. That was winter ball, 2003. I'm saying all this because just like Val and the spirit of God was using Val, she didn't even know this. I even told her about my message today. Val was talking about a calling and she was speaking to somebody. God has given you a snapshot of your life. God has given you somebody and God has given you a vision. God has given you gifts and God has called you. But you left that camera on a shelf because the minute you stepped into your calling and the minute you went into the dark room, it was uncomfortable. It was too uncomfortable for you to give up that much time to honor God and the calling that he has for you. It was too hard for you to sacrifice some of the things that God was telling you to sacrifice in your life. And he was talking about your character. And you just didn't want to give that to God. And in order for you to step into your calling, you knew that you needed accountability. But you didn't want to do what it took to put people around you to make sure that you wouldn't step into territories that you knew knew you shouldn't be stepping in anymore. You wanted to do what you wanted to do in the dark. There were some people that it was just too much. And you said, I'm not going to do that anymore. And there are some people that are in their calling, but they don't go deeper because this is where I think is the best place for me to be because this is comfortable. But anything else, God, is going to be uncomfortable. And I just don't want to do that. I'm sorry, but when you are, when you are called by God, you are called at times to be very uncomfortable. You are called to be interrupted at times. You are called to be sacrificial at times. It is not going to be easy. It is not for the weak at heart. But I believe that there is somebody that has not stepped into their true calling because of a moment in the dark room where the enemy struck fear into you and you said, "Uh uh-uh, this is too much. And God is telling you right now, you need to step back into that developing room, son. You need to step back into that dark room, daughter. And there are some things that you will go through, but it will be worth it. And remember that there is joy ahead. And remember that you are not alone. And remember that I have called you for greater. But you have suffocated yourself because you want what's easy. Easy never saved the world. He went to a cross bearing its shame, defeating death and sin for you and for me while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. In order to become, you must be developed. And there is somebody, who am I speaking to this morning? Rise up! Rise up! It's time to get uncomfortable. Right now you're uncomfortable because I'm yelling. It's going to be uncomfortable. There are going to be days that aren't going to be easy, but stop choosing easy for your life. Get into your word, son. Get in, get on your knees and pray. Cry out to God. When we get, when we sing, I'm running, I don't know how it goes, I'm running to you. How do, I don't know any more of the melody. Maybe I don't need to do a, a, a CD because I'm 2000 baby. Maybe my daughter's like, what's a CD dad? 
When we sing that part, I'm running to you, some people can't even sing that part because you're not ready to run to God. You're not ready to give up and sacrifice. I'm on this race with you and I'm gonna tell you this, I need you to jump into the race with me too. We have work to be done. We have seats to fill. We have people to save. We have marriages that need to be saved. We have young people that are thinking things, that are doing things, that are believing things that this world is teaching them. And we need you. You know, you know the greatest need in this church is for people to be in student ministry and, 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 and venture kids. Do you know where people want to serve? Everywhere else but there. Because that's too sacrificial. I've got kids of my own. I'm not going to do that. That's daycare for me while I sit in here. No, those are people in there that are teaching your children about Jesus, amen, and building a foundation. Those kids that come, those, those students that come here, yeah, they play and have fun and do Nerf Wars and all that stuff, but there is a leader that is leading them to Jesus. This is the year of becoming. What do you want to become? But have you filtered it through God's word? And is it God honoring or is it just, is, is it just honoring your life and it's your flesh and it's your desires? I believe that there are gonna be some people in here this year that are gonna finally step into the person that God has created you to be. Don't miss it. Look at your neighbor and tell them don't miss it. Don't miss it. 1 Peter 4, 10 through 13, I'm leaving with this. If you've never read 1 Peter, go read it. It's five chapters. You can read it in a week. God has given gifts to each of you from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Manage them well so that God's generosity can flow through you. Are you called to be a speaker? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. You are called to help others do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then God will be given glory in everything through Jesus Christ. All the glory and power belong to him forever and ever. Amen. And then he says this, dear brothers or dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening. Instead, be very glad because these trials will make you partners with Christ in his suffering. And afterward, you will have the wonderful joy of sharing his glory when it is displayed to all the world. You are agents of grace. You are hope dealers. You are generation changers. You are ambassadors of the most high king and church Every single one of us, whether online and watching or in these seats, there is a calling over your life. So today in this message, where do you find yourself? Maybe you realize you need to pump the brakes on some things that you've willed into your life. I'm going to tell you right now, maybe it's been years you've been living in this situation. Do what's right and honor God. Amen. Maybe you realize you need more developing, then do it. Go home. Remember homework, write your steps down. Read Genesis 37 through 50. Listen to what Joseph went through from start to finish until his death and jot down those things. God, and then ask God, God, what do you wanna develop more within me before I go off and make a fool out of myself? Let it be your will, not my will in my life. But I hope today that you are choosing to do what's necessary in order for you to become the people that God has called you to be and me to be this year, amen, and that we are going to become everything and we aren't going to miss anything that God wants us to be a part of. Are you with me? I'm believing for you. I'm praying for you. And I am hopeful for you for some real change over your life. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, God, we boldly come before you and we thank you for your correction. We thank you, God, for your desire for change in our life, but we also thank you for your overbearing love. 
And we thank you, God, that despite us, you still love us, you still provide for us, and your mercies and your grace are evident in our life. And God, help us as we are eight days into this new year, God, and as tomorrow we get into 21 days of prayer and fasting, Father God, that we take this season so serious in our life because there are people that you have around us that are counting on us, even though we don't realize it, but there are people watching us and they wanna see what we are doing in our life because we claim to be Christ followers. Help us to do it right. Help us to see the opportunity and the potential Help us to be praying about the people around us and how we can be a hope and we can be a light under their lives as we are hopeful to become more like you and less like us. Thank you for the responsibility, but with responsibility comes accountability. And God, I pray that what we are doing in the light, we also are doing in the dark and we are men and women of integrity. And Father God, I am just calling out the enemy right now that he's got to flee. He's got to get behind us. He has no room in our thoughts and in our life anymore to to try to stake his place, Father God, but we are believing today for a renewing of a mind, for a softened heart, for somebody to just wake up from their spiritual slumber. No longer are we going to be complacent. Father God, we are gonna be about your business. I'm gonna be about my daddy's business. I'm gonna wake up every day seeking you. I'm gonna wake up expecting that you are gonna do something in me. I'm ready, Father God. And when the enemy comes to try to test me and try to just veer me off, course I'm gonna be an eight second cowboy and I'm gonna keep riding and I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna believe you for at your word and what you say because your promises are yes and amen God have your way have your way in every single one of us individually and collectively we want to make an impact in Salinas and beyond we want to be a church that's shaking things up we want to be a church that's making hell scared we want to be a church that's making an impact in seeing people far from God to say yes to Jesus father God I'm praying that there are people in here not one not two a handful two handfuls of people that are going to wake up and join us on mission not just coming to sit in these seats but saying I'm called and I'm ready. I'm signing up. I'm going to be consistent and I'm going to be developed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Come on. Yeah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. If you're in here for the first time, you're like, what did I walk into? If you're watching for this time, you're like, what am I listening to? We have a passion here to see people that don't know Christ, that are far from Christ, to have an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. And today we want to give that opportunity. You're not here just because. This is a divine appointment. And God is after you. He loves you. He wants the best for you. And you, because I know, because I've been there before in my life, where I tried every single, I tried drugs, relationships, and no boundaries within them. I tried chasing check after check and dollar after dollar. I tried to look so good for people. I tried to manipulate things. I lied my way through things. I was a coward in areas in my life. I hurt people. I was a sinner in need of a savior. And today I still am a sinner in need of a savior. And I am not perfect, but I am becoming.